as a photographer and a content creator, I spend a lot of time at this desk in front of these two monitors editing. So today we're going to be taking a look at what happens if I were to strip away the two physical monitors that I know and love and replace them with a virtual monitor using the Quest 3. Okay, so full disclosure, I've never actually tried this before. So the reactions that you're gonna be getting today are authentic and real. So with that out of the way, let's jump into some virtual reality. All right, so here we are in virtual reality. You are over there, hello. And this is my Quest home screen. So what we're gonna do first of all is define the desk surface. So we're literally just going to drag out where my desk is like this, and then we need to set the height. Just like that. And here we are. I'm in my virtual room now. I've got my virtual desk and I've got my two monitors. Now, another thing that I can do, I can figure out how to do it. There we go. I can actually add in a third monitor. So in real life, I only have two monitors, but here I've got three. So let's have some fun with this. And using hand tracking, just like this, these are my hands. I can now actually use my keyboard and mouse. So, <laughs> I can bring up Lightroom here and load up Spotify and potentially just bring this over to this screen here. And maybe if I go here, I could load up Photoshop. So here it is on my first monitor. I've got my Spotify set up. So if I wanted to, I could just listen to music. I've got Lightroom here, and then over here, excuse all the chickens, I've got Photoshop open. And I also get the major advantage of I'm not using the Quest controllers to try and virtually drag, say, the exposure and the contrast. I can use my mouse and keyboard, so the functionality is fully there. And effortlessly, I can switch from being here in Lightroom and come over here and make some adjustments to one of my Photoshop images. So one drawback you might not have picked up on yet is the fact that in virtual reality, even though I can hold my mouse and I can type on my keyboard, I actually can't see it in front of me. So I've done further research and I've actually realized that if you were to come into the settings tab over here and underneath desk, you've got an option to track keyboard. Now, the only problem is that you've got very limited options. My keyboard is actually made by Corsair, but the only options we've got are for Apple, Logitech, Microsoft, and Dell. The tracking isn't gonna be perfect, but let's just say we chose the Logitech keyboard and we went for this one here. We now have this keyboard. Now you'll notice that when I put my hand on the keyboard, you actually start to see my real hand. This is my virtual one, and there's my real one. And this here coming through is my real keyboard. So even though it's not going to be perfect because again, this virtual keyboard has this entire keypad here. In real life, my keyboard actually stops past here. There's nothing else. However, for a proof of concept, it works. Am I gonna go out and buy one of the keyboards that's listed on the program? Absolutely not. I mean, this seems to track it just fine. That means now that when I come over to the Windows tab, I can very easily, or quite easily anyway, type in the things that I want. So again, I can search here DaVinci Resolve and load that up. I definitely now have the options if I were to load up one of my projects. So let's, uh, let's load up my most recent video here, which is actually that video right there. I can now come in Let's just say cut up a section of my video. Instead of scrambling to find the delete key, I can now see in virtual reality exactly where it is on my keyboard, which is right there. And I can boop, delete it and it's gone. But that does bring me on to my next point because as you probably just saw there, it lagged quite a bit. Just deleting that one clip, it was a very slow process to delete that. Let's do it again so we can see it. So there's the delete button. We'll look at the screen this time. I press delete. This is where we get into the biggest problem of having virtual desktops. Although it looks absolutely amazing, the performance in its beta mode anyway at the current time of this recording, while it's in beta, it's quite laggy. 
I've got a pretty beefed up PC, a PC that can at least handle DaVinci Resolve without any lag whatsoever. So putting on the headset and then losing the speed that I'm used to just to do it in VR for me really is not worth it. This will significantly slow down my workflow process, which I really don't want. But what about just general web browsing? I mean, if we head over to Spotify, when I'm scrolling up and down through an album, there's really no delay because it's just Spotify, you know? It's a lot less intense than any of the other programs that we've tried so far today. And when we head over to Google and we say, where's my keyboard gone? There it is. <laughs> and we go on to YouTube. So this is just me on my YouTube homepage. And as I'm scrolling with my mouse, it's very responsive. It's as if I'm using my normal computer. It's as if I'm using my monitor. There's absolutely no delay whatsoever. But the proof of concept is there. From using low intensity programs like Google Chrome or like Spotify, it shows that you can have a lag-free and latency-free experience that's actually really smooth and quite enjoyable. What they really need to work on now, getting this program out of beta and into its full version, I want to be able to use programs like Photoshop and Lightroom with as little lag as I get out of, say, using Google Chrome. And I think when that happens, that's when I'll be very happy to sit in this virtual space that I've got here. This room is very nice. These monitors are a beautiful size. The fact that I can have three of them is amazing. Once we get to that point where I can use DaVinci as flawlessly as I can use, say, Google Chrome, that's when I would genuinely consider moving over and having my entire workflow be in virtual reality. So while we wait for Meta to improve the virtual monitors, you can instead use that time to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, check out some older videos here. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you again for watching.